Hello guys, in this video I'm going to compare three, uh, actually four different uh, viewfinders for uh, for all kinds of cameras, cinema cameras, you know, DSLRs, whatever you want to use it for. Now, even though I only have three up here, I'm saying four because there's another uh, viewfinder that I've had uh, and I can quickly tell you why I no longer have it and it's the one from Blackmagic, it's the Blackmagic Ursa viewfinder uh, and if you're shooting with a Ursa basically mini camera, then I guess it makes sense to have that. Um, Although, even though I shoot mainly with the Ursa mini cameras, I, uh, after a few months, uh, ended up selling it. And the reason was because uh, the image quality on that viewfinder is great. It's 1080p display and all that stuff. Yeah, it's amazing image quality, but I just found that if you want to ever use it uh, with another camera, then it's uh, it's not the best you know option out there. The main reason is because of the mounting. The mount is literally specifically designed for the Ursa Mini kind of a top rail mount that you have. And also that's another thing is if for example you don't use the top handle and then the the mount rail that Blackmagic designs, uh, then you can have kind of a problem attaching that to even the Ursa Mini. Another thing I, I didn't like about the viewfinder is the fact that the cables, the power and the SDI cables which it only has, you know, SDI, like I said, input in there. Uh, those cables are actually permanently attached to it. And uh, that can be a huge problem. There's actually one uh, filmmaker that I, that I know who, uh, after months of using the viewfinder, like he loved it, but basically one of the cables, because you know, you're bending, you're moving it uh, when you're working with it, and the cable just broke, and then the whole viewfinder is useless. So I, I really don't think that was a smart design uh, on, on Blackmagic's part. And all these other viewfinders I have up here, you basically attach whatever cables you want, and if they ever break, you just get a new cable. But the viewfinder still works. So that's one of the reasons why I will not be really showing that viewfinder here, even though, like I said, I've used the Ursa Mini viewfinder uh, for months, and I liked it. I mean, the image quality was beautiful. It just really came down to the design, the mount, and the cables. And that viewfinder was uh, 1500 bucks. Uh, what I have up here are kind of, you know, that, that one was in the middle price range. These two up here are just under two thousand dollars, and the cheapest one is from F and V. Uh, this one's seven hundred fifty bucks, so very cheap. Uh, now you'll notice big size difference. Uh, this is the Spectra HD four uh, viewfinder. You can call it slash uh, a, a display, really, because really what it is, and that's one of the reasons why it's so big. It's actually a, an LCD basically that you can use because it just pops up, open, and you have your display up here, seven twenty p resolution. Uh, now still, you know, really nice image quality, but when you compare it to these other ones here, which are full 1080p resolution, then you'll notice it, it's not that much of a difference because again, it's a small scale, but you'll notice that uh, it's just a tiny bit not as sharp as the other ones, but you can definitely still pull focus with it, no problem. And I'm only saying that that's when you have the loop basically here on top of it. Uh, that's when you'll notice maybe that it's a tiny bit, like feels a little softer than the other uh, viewfinders. But when you're just looking at it like this, it looks great. Uh, because again, at that size, 720p resolution is great. What I love about this is obviously the price. That's one of the reasons why I got this. Uh, I've been using this for uh, about uh, over two years now. I forgot exactly when I got it. But yeah, this, the, the size is not a great, about, you know, it is kind of bulky, but it is very cheap, 750 bucks. Like I said, these ones are just under $2,000. As far as powering options, uh, you can power it using DC, AC. Uh, you have seven to uh, what is it, 18 volts, uh, basically, you know, wrench that you can plug in here. But you can also put in a Sony NPS style battery, uh, and that that makes it very handy. Then, for example, if you're using it with like a DSLM camera or something, uh, and you know, then you usually you're not gonna be carrying it on a giant, you know, V-mount battery or things like that. So then you can just put that in there. So that's that's really cool. Uh, it has SDI in and out, and actually has a full loop through, plus the same thing for HDMI. It has HDMI in and out. Uh, again, very handy. So, you know, it means you can use it with professional cameras, but you can also use it with uh, DSLR, DSLMs uh, that use HDMI. Um, yeah, you have a headphone jack, which is really cool because it means you can monitor audio uh, on those cameras, like the Sony A6500, things like that that don't allow you to think um, to monitor audio. And you also have a tally light. So if you're recording and let's say you're in a studio environment, you can see when the camera is rolling. Um, uh, aside from that, it's uh, here. It, it is well built, has these fans here on the top. It has a Ari Rosette style mount here uh, on the right side. So it's gonna work with most of your kind of EVF uh, attachments uh, that you can buy out there. Uh, and then on top of that, on the bottom here, you have a quarter 20 screw. 
Um, and like I said, uh, here we have your diopter here. You can adjust your basically for your eyesight, um, uh, the focus and, you know, you have a little lens cap. And as far as, uh, like I said, functionality, it actually, for the price, it's surprisingly has a lot of uh, really cool functionality. It has, you know, aside from zebras and like the, the you know, focus picking and things like that, uh, you can actually uh, uh, turn on a waveform, which not every viewfinder or monitor these days have, has it. Uh, you can even have vector scopes in it. So like I said, it has really like some of the, you know, higher end kind of features. Uh, the lot of monitors out there or, or higher end, you know, EVFs will have. So if you're looking for a budget, you know, viewfinder and you don't mind the fact that it is so big and bulky, um, you know, and but you also want to have the option, like I said, of using it maybe as just a monitor uh, if, and you care about all those extra features, then um, then I, I think that's uh, this is a, a great option. Now, if you want something that's kind of more, let's say, more professional and it, not so much in, like, again, the quality, is there a difference? Yes, there's a difference, but these are, again, it's it's a tiny bit of a you know, sharpness basic increase uh, because they're 1080p displays. What these offer is obviously they're kind of just more designed to work with like a professional cinema camera. They're smaller, you know, and because of that, they're again, it's just, just easier to work with than having this big thing. So the next one I have up here is from JTZ, the X01K, uh, that's the model name. Uh, and it's, yeah, just the overall a nice, solidly built, you know, it's like, uh, I think, uh, machined aluminum. Uh, it just feels solid in your hand. Uh, really well built uh, EVF. You have the, here the adapter for adjusting the, the, you know, the focus for your eyes. It is a little tight, I found, like to, to move it. But in a way, it's good because once you do put it to a position you like, you just, you know, you won't, uh, 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 you know, accidentally basically shift on you. Uh, you have a fan here in the back uh, to keep everything cool. And you have an HDMI input. Uh, there's actually a USB type C that's for upgrades, for like firmware upgrades. And there has been so far since I got this one firmware upgrade that added like extra LAT functionality and things like that. Uh, here on the top, you have this simple dial. Uh, you can kind of go up and down, left and right and press it. And that's how you navigate the menu system uh, using basically this little dial. And, and then on both sides, you'll find a, basically every rosette uh, mounts. So you have that up here uh, with a quarter 22 if you just, that's all you care about. Uh, on this side, you'll have the uh, the, the power in uh, and then you'll have the SDI connection. Uh, and this you can power anywhere from seven to 20 volts. So again, you know, a lot of different ways that you can power it. Now you will need to plug this in, like I said, to some kind of a battery or maybe a camera that that, that shares the power you know, with, from its battery source. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind. But again, this is designed for more cinema cameras and all cinema cameras will have that. What do I think of the quality of this? The quality of this is top notch. It's just as good as the, the one from Blackmagic, they said, or the one I have up here, which is the Gradical uh, from uh, Zacuto. Uh, beautiful quality. I really didn't see a difference in, in when it comes to quality. Uh, and uh, and it's really actually cool when you consider what you're getting with this. Uh, you're getting actually a whole case and along with that case, you're also getting uh, the mount and actually all of the like EVFs that you see me here using in these shots, uh, the mount actually is the mount that came with this. So it comes with the most things. It comes with the mount, comes with cables, comes with different power cables, you know, like I said, video, uh, SDI cables, like all that stuff. So you pretty much when you buy this, you have the whole package. You kind of don't really have to buy any other accessories and you can start using this right away. Uh, so th that's really cool. Uh, and the mount, like I said, is actually a very handy mount. I, I use it now on my cinema cameras. Whether I'm using this EVF or the other one or, or, or the one from Zakuto, they're all the same basically. The the, uh, you know, the mount is going to work with all of them, and it's a very versatile kind of you know mount that allows you to, to mount it pretty much into any position. Now, is there anything bad I can say about it? Uh, not really, to be honest. Uh, the software, like I said, it's uh, it has a lot of features. You can do load and custom LUTs. Plus, it comes already with a lot of LUTs like the V lag, S lag, C lag. That you know the most standard kind of log to to video kind of profile log lots uh, it already comes loaded with those um you can take a still you can i mean you, know, you can flip left and right all that stuff uh you know you have false color you have a lot of cool functions one thing that this maybe doesn't have when it comes to the the zakudo is the fact that zakudo has the vector scope and the waveforms uh which you know if you're if you're serious about cinematography i find that that's kind of a, a must having those you know a vector scope uh, maybe, well, maybe not so much a vector scope, although it does come in really handy, 
but a waveform for sure. So I wish that this had it. Now, since I've upgraded the firmware, they did add extra functionality and uh, you know that those things are really something that can be upgraded through the software. So maybe, I don't know, JTZ guys, engineers over there, if you guys are listening to this video, uh, maybe consider adding, a, a, like I said, a proper waveform and a vector scope. And that, that would just make this a perfect uh, kind of EVF. Uh, and I, lo I love the size of it and the weight and everything, the feel of it. Um, how does it compare to the Gradical? I mean, I don't know if I have to say much about the Gradical. I think it's been kind of a, kind of almost became like an industry standard. A lot of people are using this. Uh, and I found myself also like using it, you know, through a lot of jobs. It never had a problem. And now one thing maybe to keep in mind is that the Gradical is SDI only input. Uh, so you cannot really, you know, plug it into as many cameras, I guess, as this one, because this one has HDMI. Uh, so that's one thing to keep in mind. But again, if you're working with professional cameras, that's not an issue. What the Gradical has uh, is just the software is way better, way better than any other EVF or even monitor. Uh, and, and also even the display, like the display, uh, I would say the image looks uh, about the same size, like maybe a tiny bit, like when you're looking through it, it feels a little bit smaller in the Gradical maybe, but it's not a bit big of a difference. You can still see all the details and you know, you can do one-to-one -one pixel zoom-ins and all that stuff. Uh, you have anamorphic D squeeze, just as you have with this one. Um, but what makes the difference here is that the kind of layout, and I wish I could show it to you guys, but literally you kind of have to look through there to see it. But the layout of it is with the Gradical, you can have everything kind of be full screen and you can have your exposure guides and things like that or audio meters kind of overlaid. Or because the display is, is not like a widescreen display, it's more of like a, like a square giant display. What it means is that you can have your image kind of on top and on the bottom, basically since nothing is obscuring your image, you still have all your information, whether it's audio meters or you know you can have the vector scopes, which again, this one has the waveforms, like, and you can customize how you want to see those vector scopes and waveforms and all that cool stuff. So it just has, the, the software is just basically a lot better. Um, and, and I guess also because the display is, it has a, you know, taller, it's basically, I guess it's a square aspect ratio. So it means that you can have the, the you know, you, you have more real estate basically to place things in there. So that's what I would say really makes the Zakudo kind of stand out. Uh, and that's the reason why I think, you know, there are a lot of people, a lot of industry pros are using this. Uh, it is a great EVF. And when you consider it, they're both priced right now at identical. Uh, then again, it's, you know, it kind of comes down to, do you care about HDMI and being able to, let's say, use this with, um, you know, let's say DSLR, DSLM type of cameras, then maybe go with this. But at the same time, if you don't care about that, then uh, there's a kudo, uh, Probably just you know it has more functionality, more more things. Now as far as just the image quality, they're, they're both amazing. They really did not see a difference there. Uh, so it really just comes down to software, which like I said, uh, you know the the JTZ one uh, could possibly be upgraded. Now don't hold me to to it. I, I don't know the company. They're not paying me to say anything. Uh, like I said, this is just one of the EVFs I have, and I'm hoping it would be nice if they added uh, you know the, like upgraded the software so you have those. Mainly, like I said, for me, it's just the, the uh, you know the waveform and the vector scope. Uh, there's a kudo also, like I said, software is amazing. You can load in lots things like that. Um, the, you, the flap is actually pretty nice because you can kind of keep it in there and you can use it with it. But when you let go of it, it just kind of closes. So you'll never have run into danger of like you know, or basically with all EVFs, you never want to leave them where the sun can go directly through the lens because. You know, then concentrates the light and it will just burn your your uh, image thing, uh, basically display there. With this one, you kind of have to be careful because there is no cap on there. So you know, make sure you always point it down or something so you don't have the sun uh, basically shining through there. Um, as far as the build, as you'll notice, the size is pretty much identical. Like the the thing, I mean, the kudo maybe is a tiny bit kind of wider, not much of a difference because it's in the shape of a ball, but then it's narrower on the bottom. So again. Pretty much identical. Weight is almost identical to. Uh, I don't know if there is any difference. So, in that sense, because the price, all that stuff is, is very similar. It just I just wish that the JTZ would offer those extra features. Then it would be, uh, I think, a better deal. Simply because then when you buy this, you get like I said the case. You get all the the mount for it. You you get uh, uh, you know the, the articulator arm, cables, all everything. With the Zakudo, when you buy it, you don't get really anything. Uh, so you do have to buy your own. You know, obviously, you know, SDI cable, but even your power cable, it's, it's a two, two pin Lima connection. So it's easy to get, but like I said, it just have, it's something you have to buy. Again, with the JTZ, you don't have to buy anything extra. 
So, you know, is that going to make a big difference in your purchasing uh, decision? I, I guess, you know, that's up to you. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it, kind of what I'm thinking about, uh, you know, when it comes to my final opinion. If you want something professional or more kind of cinema kind of cameras, I think these two are great options. If you want something on a budget and something that uh, maybe that you can use, like I said, as a monitor also with your DSLRs and all that stuff. And I think this one is the best suited, uh, the Spectre HD4. Anyways, this is my review of the, the different viewfinders that I have up here right now. And uh, hopefully you guys found it useful if you did uh, and you want to see more videos like this, reviews, tips, techs, tutorials, even uh, lighting, lighting tutorials, stuff like that. Uh, then best thing to do is go to my website, subscribe to my newsletter. You'll get a free gift in return. Lots I'm giving away. Uh, plus, you'll find a whole bunch of, like I said, stuff on my website. And you'll be notified through email uh, when I do upload another video or if I just have uh, articles and things like that that are exclusively on my website. So uh, go uh, follow the link in the description of this video for my newsletter. <laughs> Anyways, bye, guys. I'll see you in the next video.